Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Dear friends, it's good for us to be here, not to, of course, quote St. Peter, and I want a special welcome two of my brother bishops. Thank you for coming and attending our conference here for St. John Bosco. You're most welcome, most welcome. And actually, we've had a chance to visit on the, uh, one of us on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in, in Latvia, and then also Orlando. So <laughs> good for us to have a chance to be here in our home in Steubenville. Whoever receives you receives me. So what does that mean? Well, Jesus' words are quite direct, but they also are an invitation for us to go out. We're not, as Christians, we're not silos. No man is an island, nor is a woman. We're called to go out, to encounter. I say that because Every year, I have a chance to visit our Catholic schools. There are 11 in the Diocese of Steubenville. And I try to encounter the various classes, especially during Catholic Schools Week, celebrating Mass for each one of those schools. And there are different, let's say, game plans that I have for different grades. The older ones, I will explain how God is proven through science. Now, I can't get into that right now here in the homily. Otherwise, you're looking at a 45-minute homily, and that might be tough on the catechesis here. However, it's well-received. There are a lot of books out there, Catholic authors, that talk about science, and I'm a, I'm a science geek. So I enjoy having a chance to share that with the students to show that faith and reason are not mutually exclusive. One depends on the other, our science and our faith. Other grades, we'll get a little lower, let's say the fourth grade. I will do an impromptu, ask the bishop. And not to push something, but I actually published a book like that as well. But that was a result. Actually, I would say the kids republished the books. It was the kids asked three questions every month in our diocesan paper, and I published those, which was so great. And afterwards, my education office said, you have 180 questions that you've answered. Why don't you make it a book? And thank goodness that we did just that and used the four pillars of the catechism. Fourth grade, had a chance to visit with them, and then I made the mistake of asking them a question. And I asked, how long do you think I've been a bishop? A young lady, very confident, raised her hand and said, 85 years. <laughs> I asked for it, or second graders to come in especially before they receive First Communion. Have any questions for the bishop? And a young gentleman raised his hand, a little seven-year-old. He goes, this question has been bothering me my entire life. <laughs> okay, and he goes, what were Jesus' first words? I'm like, well, we have, of course, Jesus' words as a 12-year-old in the temple, but I'm not one in, when it comes to speculative theology, but I thought, you know, He's God, but he's also a little baby boy. So think about what was our first word? Probably mommy. And how Jesus was even teaching us back then, the head of the church, teaching the body of the church that Mary is our mother. And then, of course, to visit the kindergarten kids, which you say their attention spans like four and a half seconds. You have a chance to visit with them and talking off squirrel. <laughs> so I went and visited with them and they were doing a little Crayola crayon drawings. And I went to a young lady there, and I said, oh, and I can't recall what the drawing was. And I said, you know, when I was your age, we had Crayola, Crayola crayons as well. She looked up at me, she goes, no way. <laughs> what, am I from the Stone Age or what? But we're encountering. The kids have a chance to see their bishop. The only time I saw my bishop growing up was when I was confirmed. That was it. So this way they have a chance to visit with the shepherd, ask questions about their faith, encounter, encounter, encounter. And so in those classrooms as well as at mass, I'm living the whoever receives you receives me. We share Jesus. Jesus concludes his apostolic discourse in the gospel according to Matthew with vivid imagery for you and for me, not just the apostles 2,000 years ago, but here, us in Finnegan Fieldhouse. 
whoever receives you receives me. These words define evangelization and catechesis, yes. These words define who the apostles are to be. You see, it's been said that the apostles were more than teachers because Jesus is more than a teacher. As we, all of us, represent Jesus with the human drama of redemption as it plays out here even in our human history now, Christian salvation begins and ends in encounter, in an embrace. In dispensing the grace of God's various gifts, certainly as bishops and priests, we do more than teach. We bring people to Jesus and through him bring them to our Heavenly Father. Putting it bluntly, the eternal union of Father and Son, the eternal communion, comes to humanity. The divine word's mission. My dear friends, here as we commence our conference here on evangelization and catechesis, let us remember we're more than teachers. We are missionary disciples, as Pope Francis puts it. And a missionary disciple is a Christ bearer. A missionary disciple is a Christ bearer. The divine presence in Jesus is also shared with the apostles, empowering them with the authority to share in the apostolic mission, a mission that is shared then with all the faithful by virtue of our baptism, our confirmation, our reception of the Eucharist, those sacraments of initiation. For the church, authority is from above and shared in the divine human community. The whole purpose of the incarnation and passion and resurrection is the very communion with the person of Jesus Christ. We are sent to the people of God in Christ's name. As Jesus went out to share himself with humanity, my dear friends, we, he's the first going out, we are the second going out over and over again to share Jesus Christ, to be, if I can say, contagious with the Holy Spirit. Jesus encourages us and he leaves us with these words. Whoever receives you, receives me. Amen.